Hey, Shoujo fans, and welcome to this very extra special episode of Shoujo Sunday. We are doing our very first interview ever as podcasters with Kylie McNeil, the voice of Suzu and Belle from the movie Belle. So without further ado, let's dig in. First of all, thank you so much, Kylie, for joining us on our podcast. We are very happy to have you with us this evening. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Let's dive right into it. So I just want to set the scene here to start off. So you audition for the role of Suzu slash Belle through your agent. And out of 250 submissions on top of the Belle directing team scouring over the internet, they choose you. How did it feel learning that you got the part, and how did you celebrate that? <laughs> oh my god, um, it was a great, it was a great day. I think I, I, I remember that I was having a really bad day the the time I found out. Um, so when I got the email, I was like, mm-hmm. "What?" And um, yeah, I was screaming all over the house with my family, and yeah, it was great. <laughs> Oh, that's like, what a way to turn your day around. That sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'd love to actually ask you also, like, what was the first anime that you ever watched? Oh, oh, I think it was My Neighbor Totoro. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. We love Ghibli. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, we big too. Ghibli fans here. Yeah, Spirited yeah. Away is my favorite, I think, of the Ghibli movies, but... My Neighbor oh. Totoro was the first one. Actually, speaking of Spirited Away, did you notice like any similarities between Shihiro's story in Spirited Away and Suzu's in Belle? Ooh, that's interesting. I think, I mean, there's definitely a, a kind of similar character arc in that they both kind of start out kind of depressed and whiny and kind of have to go on this adventure where they like completely change. So maybe that... Um, I also mm-hmm. always think of, there's a scene in Belle where, um, Suzu's on the, the train to go, like, save Kay, and I just, I always think trains spirited away because of that, like, amazing train sequence, so, yeah. that liminal yeah. space traveling in between lives thing, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, we'd, we'd love to ask if you actually have, like, a favorite shoujo anime, Oh, show or movie? I don't. I mean, is there any you recommend? Absolutely. Okay. So, <laughs> especially being a Jib a, a Ghibli fan in particular, I could not recommend Whisper of the Heart to you oh. more. Okay. Especially cool. like you're a very creative, like passionately creative woman, and the main character in that is a like very passionately like creative woman she's a writer she has all these dreams and ideas and i could not recommend and it's an adorable love story could not recommend it more oh cool okay i'll definitely check that out cool yeah you totally should getting into the world of bell a little bit i'm curious if you have any ideas of what your like avatar would look like in the world of you Ooh, <laughs> i think somebody <laughs> Somebody asked me this once, and I feel like my answer was bad, but I, I've thought about it since, and there, I think of, there was actually, like, a character in the script that only has, like, a, like, a reaction line that they recorded, so it's like, they go, huh? So, um, but it's this, like, sloth that they, in the script, wrote as David Bowie sloth. I don't know why, like, I think it kind of, the facial, like, lines drawn on it looked like something David Bowie might have done with the makeup. So, anyway, I think I would be David Bowie sloth. <laughs> I love that so much. That's spectacular. <laughs> yeah. He's so iconic. Like, I could see yeah. it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Uh, what was the biggest challenge that you faced while tackling the role of Suzu and Belle? Um, with this being your first time in a dubbing studio. Ooh, my biggest challenge. <laughs> it might have been, like, 
self-doubt, honestly. I was really um, scared and nervous, and I, I always get, like, major imposter syndrome, so with this being, like, I don't know, the biggest deal thing I've ever been a part of, I was definitely, like, <sighs> feeling some of that imposter syndrome. Um, but the dub director was um, really helpful in making me feel at home and making me feel like I deserved to be working on this. Um, Michael, uh, he was, yeah, kind of integral in making me feel like, like I belonged to, like this role was meant to be played by me or like I, yeah, deserved to be there. So probably my own self-doubt. <laughs> that resonates a lot too, I think, with Suzu because there, there is a lot of that inner inner dialogue she had to overcome as well. Sure, yeah, yeah. Speaking of Suzu and, you know, drawing from personal experiences, did you draw from, like, any specific high school experiences in order to embody what Suzu was feeling at certain points? And if so, would you be comfortable maybe sharing one? Yeah, sure. Um, in high school, I was definitely pretty shy, and I, I went to a performing arts high school, so I had to kind of, you know get up and perform no matter what, you know, <laughs> no matter how much anxiety I was feeling. Um, but during class, I would, you know, barely talk just because I was, I don't know, super uncomfortable in like social situations. Um, so when I was playing Suzu, I kind of like tried to tap into that feeling of being an outcast, even though I, like, I wasn't. I was just quiet. I don't know. But, <laughs> um, of being, like, in the back of the class, not wanting to talk, not wanting to participate, being too anxious. Because Suzu definitely has that. So, yeah, that was helpful in kind of creating her voice, I guess, because she kind of has breaks in her voice, and she's shaky, and she's quiet, and, yeah, definitely thought about my high school years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, I'm a bit of um, an introverted performer as well, so mm. I, I get it where it's like, oh, I can turn it on for the thing, but most other times I'm just like, yeah, a little shut off. Yeah, yeah, totally. yeah. Yeah, I also wanted to ask if there are parts of Suzu's life that resonate with the life that you have now or that you had before you took on the role. A lot of the things that I, I guess something I, I also drew from besides like high school stuff was Suzu had a, a loss in her life that kind of caused her to turn to music and turn to art to deal with it. And like I, when I was younger, I like, I lost my abuelo and he was like, a, he was a singer. So, um, he was a flamenco singer. Um, and, uh, so I think I, I kind of, when that happened, I, I turned to music and I started writing music more and yeah, so that's a parallel thing, I suppose. Um, we learned, uh, that you are an older sister and we were wondering <laughs> if your younger brother has seen Belle and how he might have felt about you being in it or the film's overall message. Oh. <laughs> Oh my god, I am an older sister. Um, yeah, my brother came with me um, and my family and my best friend to see Belle uh, when it opened in theaters um, January 2022, um, which feels like a very long time ago. I remember him saying, like, the dragon parts were the best or something like that. And I was like, valid. Okay, sure. Thanks, bro. <laughs> Um, yeah, he's been super supportive, and whenever I do, like, anime conventions, uh, and they're close to where I live, uh, I, I've, I've been bringing him, so he's been, like, helping me and being my little bodyguard, because he's, like, six foot two, like, and he's 13, so wow. he's my bodyguard. Yeah, it's pretty great. I don't have to pay him. <laughs> It's fantastic. I also love that his response is just like the most typical younger brother response. Yeah, the, the right. The, yeah. the dragon is real cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are your feelings surrounding the lack of separation between like the internet and the real world that's in Bell? Hosoda definitely had like a strong message with making the internet so integral nowadays. With like, you know everything that has happened within the last few years, it's like, internet is amazing, and it's, you know, it brings people together, and we'd all be so lonely without mm. it. Um, but it also shows how dependent people can be on it, and how, in turn, it can actually be more isolating. Um, and I think Hosoda was able to show that really well. 
there's like a like billions of users in in you. Um, mm-hmm. But he also kind of showed how the internet can be used for for good. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a tricky like thing to navigate, but I think it's very close to reality. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. I, I really liked that both sides of the, the negative and the positive that can be found in the internet was, I feel like it was showcased really well, like very, very, um, I lost the word in my head, but it was done very nicely. <laughs> yeah. So you mentioned that your family did go to see the movie with you when it opened in theaters. Was, because of the pandemic and this film being done uh, in the pandemic, were you able to experience like an in-person premiere of the movie? No, it was so depressing. <laughs> it, was, it was really sad. Yeah, no, it was like nobody was here that I had the few people I'd worked on the movie with were not here anymore, and it was so sad. No, there was not. There was nothing. It was like, well, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Especially it's as okay. it being like your first, you know, dubbing experience. That I'm. It's a shame that the <laughs> pandemic took that from you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> It's okay. <laughs> Actually, recently I went to Ohio Con though, um, in um, this convention in Ohio, and we like we sat in a in a little room with like computer speakers and like watched the movie. Oh, <laughs> like, that was nice. That's like precious. That's like a much more intimate version. Too, yeah, without all yeah, the, yeah. The bells and whistles. It was really nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we were all crying. It was great. <laughs> oh, that's spectacular. It's it's actually kind of nice that you got to share it in a in a unique way together that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. For the, like, a casual film question, do you have a favorite moment of the film? I think there's a couple. I mean, I think the, when Suzu finally, like, reveals who she is to the world, mm-hmm. that's a pretty, like, intense, I think, um, Taisei Iwasaki, who wrote, who wrote the, the music for that, I think he just, like, wrote the pr- most perfect, beautiful song, um, yeah. for that moment. So probably that. Yeah, that is a powerful moment. Just like cut to me crying the other night watching no, the movie. Like, just like wiping my eyes for views. And all of the lights <laughs> yeah. going up in the crowd. I was like, okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Where's yeah. my Kleenex? This is okay. Wow. Mm-hmm. I know. Yeah. 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 Delving a little bit deeper into like the meaning of the film. I know that Belle was Fasoda's interpretation of Beauty and the Beast in the present day. And something that we love about Belle is the fact that it sort of subverts the expectation of Belle and the Beast having a romantic relationship. In Beauty and the Beast, the movie begins with the witch casting a spell on the prince that changes him into a beast at a young age. But in Belle, Suzu is able to support and save Kay, the child that is the dragon, and Yu, who is in an abusive situation with his little brother. Well, with his little brother, Tomo. Do you believe that one of the main takeaways of this film is the importance of coming together as a society or as an individual to save children from devastating situations? Oh, wow. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that was... It's totally part of the message. And I think that's also something that people do not walk into this movie thinking they're going to see. <laughs> like, you know, the poster is this, you know, it's a pop star. Like, in, in this virtual reality world, it's all cool and, you know, whatever. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. you don't walk into Bell thinking, oh, I'm going to uh, walk away going, oh, my God. Um, you don't think you're going to see an abusive relationship <laughs> play out on screen. So I think he kind of used the veil of, like this hip movie to really talk about some dark topics that are like necessary to be talked about yeah yeah yeah, i love that this is sort of like the idea of what if like in beauty and the beast what if the beast was saved in the very beginning versus having to like go through this pain for such a long period of time like before Mm -hmm. like getting help and stuff so i i really love that about like the film and, and how it just makes it even though it's similar it makes it an entirely different experience yeah 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 i love the way it subverts expectations in that way mm-hmm. um i apologize my cat started going after my hands at the bottom of the chair um, oh my god <laughs> do not apologize <laughs> it was very unexpected um <laughs> so something i'm so curious about is 
I, I'm a big fan of, um, I like a romance story and I'm always, I always kind of gravitate towards like the romance side plots and stuff and kind of see how those are handled and fleshed out and stuff. And I'm really curious about what you think about Suzu never confessing her feelings to Shinobu at the end of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Um, I, I think it like, it leaves it open to interpretation, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, he's, you know, I think Shinobu finally, like, kind of hints that this is a new chapter in their uh, relationship, friendship, whatever. Um, and I think I'd love her little reaction, like, her little, like, blushing moment. Yeah. Um, so I do love that it's like, hey, this, it looks like this might work out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm happy for them. <laughs> yeah, it definitely leads, it led at least me uh, as as a viewer to think that they're, they could possibly be on the path to being together in the future. Yeah, um, it's probably yeah. a much more carefree chapter of their their friendship that they're starting now, which is nice to think about. Yeah. 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 Are there any, like, key symbols in the film that you think perfectly encompass Suzu's journey? Like, what Suzu's, what Suzu's journey is all about? And this is, could sort of go to, in our podcast, we have a lot of different segments when we're reviewing, like, anime. And one of it is called Sprinkles on Top, where we are basically like, oh, okay, this particular thing is a motif. And we noticed it. <laughs> And stuff, yeah. and we just want to shout it out that we're, we saw it, we highlight it. So, yeah, mm. any key symbols? I mean, I the first thing I thought of was there's quite a few, like, shots of uh, the a cloud, a big clouds in the distance. Mm. And I think that that could just be literally, they just wanted to cut to clouds in the distance. But um, at the end of the movie, there's kind of like a, la, 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 like, big epic musical swell and it cuts to like a beautiful cloud in the sky and the sunset and i uh suzu suzu's always looking out at it um when it comes to that so i wonder if like the cloud is kind of symbolizing maybe like her mother like looking after her looking out from above i don't know um that just came to mind but there's also that bridge that suzu crosses yeah um, multiple times mm. in the movie and I think that that bridge, not only is it, like, above water, which, you know, she lost her mother to drowning, mm -hmm. um, but it's also a, a transitional um, state, a bridge. Um, so maybe something like that, too. Well, I don't know. Yeah. I'm grasping at straws. <laughs> Do you have any advice for people who have watched Belle and are currently grieving a loved one? Ooh. Wow. Um, I feel like there's a lot of... You know, there's a lot of things I could say, like, you know, it's okay to move forward with your life, like, even though they're not there with you. But I think, you know, the message of, like, a million miles away is kind of, like, they're still with you, even if they're not physically present. Um, mm -hmm. And when I feel grief, I kind of, like, I have listened to a million miles away, I've been like, mm. um, just for the lyrics, like, those lyrics really hit. Um yeah. But, yeah. It's okay to not be over it. It's, it, it's not... There's no quick fixes to grieving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Something that looks different every day. Yeah. Yeah. I guess also, what would you say is the biggest takeaway from your experience after working on Belle? It was beautiful to watch such a great collaboration of people. Um mm -hmm. This movie was not made overnight by any means. People were up at crazy hours, like, making this film come to life. And I think it kind of gave me hope during a time when kind of art is put on the back burner and it's like, like, produce, 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 uh, output, no matter the quality or the whatever, you know, whatever. Um, this really was a, an artistic piece and everyone who worked on it was a genuine, like, artist who genuinely cared about making this story um as truthful as possible so i don't know it made me believe in believe in art <laughs> well, that's good especially with everything going on in the world and like ai stuff coming up just yeah. like we need people to believe in art right yeah. now for yeah. sure. um getting into more like general acting questions 
What's something that you really like about acting? Like, what do you like the most about doing doing acting? Ooh, I mean, I guess I I like escaping into being somebody else. Um, I'm sure that's like what everybody says, but it's true. Um, there's something it's so fun to play pretend. So, yeah, it's like it's so freeing. It's so um, uh, yeah, it's 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 great fun. Mm. I know that you come from a family of entertainers. Do you? want to possibly pursue Broadway one day? Oh, I would love to. That's always been a dream of mine. And I'd love to be in anything as a, an actor or, singer or whatever, performer. But I also want to, like, write my own musical. So oh, I've been, oh, like, so cool. <laughs> starting to do that. If that ever pans out, <laughs> I, I would love to do that as well. But yeah, yeah, I love Broadway. I'm actually going to see a, a show tonight. <laughs> Oh, oh. What, what's what are you seeing? I want to see. I think it's called Once Upon a One More Time, which is is a Britney Spears jukebox musical. Oh, that's fun. amazing! That I'm sounds excited. so fun. <laughs> yeah. I hope you have yeah. a great time. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So you previously noted in a different interview that auditioning for Belle was a long process. Mm -hmm. Do you have any advice for potential voice actors on how to like mitigate your anxiety in the midst of audition? Um, or also even just advice for aspiring singer songwriters in general? Ooh, I think any, any like time you're trying to break into the entertainment industry, it's like, a very lonely process. And, um, you really have to, like, believe in yourself and, you know, ugh, I hate myself for saying this, but, like, work on your craft. I Like, it, it's true. Um, and hone your craft. I don't know. Um, but, uh, oh, someone's coming in my room. Hi, bro. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. It's my brother. My bodyguard's here. <laughs> oh, my um, bodyguard has arrived. Yeah. <laughs> um, sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. Um... I, uh, oh god, I forgot what I was saying. Hone your craft, right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you really gotta believe in yourself. You're going to get rejected a million times. I, you know, I can't even count the times I have been rejected over and over in this industry, and you have to just keep, you have to keep going. And it's awful. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it, for sure. <laughs> Are you looking to do more voice acting roles in the future? And if you do, do you see yourself reaching out to like Michael or Paul or Jessica for tips and advice? Oh, um, yeah. I, I mean, I would love to do um, voice acting again. Um, I honestly miss it. It was really, really fun. Um, and yeah, I totally, Michael's my bestie still. Um, so I do reach out to him for advice. And, and Paul too. I'm so sorry. I forgot the f third person you said, but, um. Uh, Jessica, she. Oh, Jessica DeChico. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I was going to get coffee with her in, in, um, I think it was January or something. Um, but it didn't pan out, but I'm, I'm actually going to visit LA soon. So I'm, I'm going to try to go see her. I'm going to ask her out for coffee again. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, definitely, I, I, they're all such wonderful people. Yes. It's fantastic that you all keep in touch, still. Yeah. Yeah, and then they have, uh, like, so much more, like, at it, like, they've been doing this for, like, so long and stuff that, like, I feel that you have a little bit of an edge. I mean, you're also a voice actress now, but it's, like, if you need, like, advice or, like, hey, am I doing this voice right? Do you think so? Like, you can instantly, like, tap into that. Yeah, they're, they're such great, like, people and, and, and a, a good, like, resource, but I don't want to be, like, yeah, my, re like, my resources, <laughs> like, um, yeah, they're all great. <laughs> and it's crazy, because I didn't even get to work with Paul or Jessica, like, during the film, like, we kind of got to know each other on the phone more, like, after it was over. <laughs> COVID. Love it. <laughs> yeah, wild times. Wild yeah. times, for sure. <laughs> so, definitely um, a lighter question. Like, have you ever considered, like, cosplaying as Belle when you <laughs> perform songs from the oh, film God. at all? I feel like that'd be so fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it would be fun. I just, like, I could never, I could never do it. Like, I, I, I would feel too <laughs> weird about it. People have, like, been like, you should do that, though. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I don't think I should. Um, <laughs> but, um, sometimes I joke, like, 
I used to always want pink hair, and now I feel like I can't, I can't get pink hair, because it's just like, oh, no. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but I've met so many sweet cosplayers um, that come up to me as Belle, and I always, I try to take a picture with all of them, because um, mm -hmm. they're, like, gorgeous and amazing and talented. Yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Switching gears into just talking about singing um, and music. Uh, what do you like most about singing? I'd say, like, like writing music or expressing things through song kind of just, like, helps me emotionally, if that makes any sense. Like, it, mm. it kind of feels like a sort of purpose, especially with writing music. There are feelings I would not know how to express <laughs> if it weren't for music. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm also a songwriter, so I can, like, oh, cool. strongly relate. Yeah, yes. for sure. It's like, there's nothing, there's something, if you write music, you understand what the feeling is of, oh, I need to write a song about this. And, like, only songwriters understand that. Yeah. It's like a very specific emotion. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so speaking of songwriting, songwriting can be such an intimate, unique, and varying process for every musician, songwriter, and singer. Can you, or are you comfortable describing at all your creative process when you're writing music? Sure. I usually write, like, songs on the guitar. Um, so I, I will literally just, like, sit down at the guitar and usually play a melody. Um, and I just, like, stockpile lyrics in my phone, like, on the notes app. So if I'm, like, feeling, hey, this vibe might fit these lyrics, I will, like, try to put them together. It's very, it's, like... It's like doing a puzzle sometimes for me. Sometimes it comes out more naturally where it's like, oh, this makes sense, like all in a package together. But usually I'm like just quilting something. <laughs> That's so cool. So like when you're playing guitar, are you like fretting out a melody or is it more like chords? Um, it depends, but it's, us it's usually chords. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Music and musical theater has been part of your life for so long. But was there ever a time that you thought you might want to pursue something different? Oh, yeah. Every day, I wonder. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, <laughs> too real. Okay. Um, but um, I think, actually, uh, there was a time when I was in high school. I was a musical theater major, and it just got too much for me because um, it was it was very, you know, intense, constant musical theater um, study. And I think I wanted to do, like, the opposite of what, you know, every I was supposed to do. So I kind of, there was a time in there where I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. And then I was like, no, I love it. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it just takes stepping away from that thing for a little bit yeah. to realize that, like, not that you're meant for it or anything, but that's kind of what came to my mind, just that that, that, that is what you want to do. Yeah, yeah. Because um, I've, I've had those moments myself. I'm sure a lot of people listening have had those moments themselves, too. Yeah. <laughs> So, going back to Bell, what song of the Bell soundtrack was the most difficult for you to record and why? There were definitely uh, songs that were more technically, like, just vocally difficult to record. Then there were some others that were just emotionally difficult to record. Mm. Like, I remember recording You, which is the first song in the movie. Yeah. La, 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 la. It was like... It was so, it's so, it's so fast. It was so intense. And the first time I recorded it, I was like, this sounds so bad. Like, I was like, this sounds so, they played it back for me. And I was like, I have to do it again. And I actually <laughs> did it like multiple ones of the songs again. Um, mm -hmm. like I recorded Gales of Song again because my, I was super scared and it was the first song I had recorded. So I was like, you could hear the fear in my voice when they played it back for me. So on the last day, I re recorded that. Um, but emotionally, like, Lend Me Your Voice was, uh, I always dedicate that one to my friend. And weirdly, that was the only song I did in one session. <laughs> um, oh, wow. so the emotion was, like, harder to get through, but somehow the song was easier to get through. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, wow. that totally makes sense. I feel like it's not, it's definitely not on the same level as, like, recording a soundtrack. But, like, when we first started our podcast, um, we were also, like, getting to know each other at the same time so mm -hmm. like our first ep couple episodes it was just like oh it sounds like we're really awkward and like should oh, i say no. this should i not say this 
And so then we just ended yeah. up re-recording them. So yeah, <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> and putting valid. it out. So it's like, yeah, like oh, now we sound like we have a rapport down. Like they couldn't tell. Yeah. Like so, that's yeah. That's great. Like, no, yeah. you guys are doing amazing. <laughs> thank oh, you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, I know that you also like noted in another interview that while singing the reprise for A Million Miles Away, you made composer Ludwig. Ludwig Forsell cry. Um, <laughs> did it make you feel more certain about your desire to be a singer? Like getting that type of emotion from like this legendary composer. Oh, oh my god, I can't believe I said that in the interview. <laughs> sorry, Ludwig. Um, sorry to call you out. Um, it's on video. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it was... It was so bizarre to to make. I, I I remember Michael being like, "You made a room of grown men cry." <laughs> I was like, "Oh my god, um, yeah." So that's, that's super validating to make a room of grown men cry. It made me feel great. Um, and yeah, I mean Ludwig is so so talented, such a talented composer. So to to make him cry, it wasn't actually the song he wrote. Um, he wrote Gales of Song, um, oh. but. But yeah, I mean, super, super made me feel great. Sorry, love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not to get like too cheesy, but like as artists, like we want to evoke emotion out of people. So it's like when you yeah. can make these like grown people cry, it's like, yeah, I did that. It's like, sorry, <laughs> but like, yeah, I did that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. <laughs> So I know that you're working on original music. I'm curious to know how your original album is coming along. Oh my god, I'm, I'm taking forever. I am taking way too it's long. It's better to do forever than too short. Yeah. Well, that's true. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, it's good. I actually wrote a song. It was very, very, very late last year, very early this year, somewhere around then, that I felt like wrapped up this concept album that I've been writing for like way too long. So, yeah, it's a it's a, a concept album that I'm still trying to make and um I've actually started like self-producing some stuff and working with my nice. friend on um producing music and stuff. So, it's it's coming along slowly. <laughs> but it's oh, fully fantastic. written. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's so exciting when you when you start to to see the pieces coming together. Totally. It's awesome. And I yeah. actually, I perform, I think it's all of the songs. I perform most, if not all of the songs at my like live shows. Um, so I do like concerts and I perform that album there, even though it's not available to listen to, <laughs> I still perform it. Yeah. It's like super exclusive live show opportunities <laughs> for people right for now until sure. that music comes out. Yeah, yeah. My unreleased little secret stuff, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I know that for for quick content, I I I I work in music. I play at a uh, piano bar. Oh cool. So I know that sometimes what I hear at work will unintentionally affect my songwriting. Oh, yeah. So I'm just curious if, like, working with, uh, you know, all the music in Belle and even, like, the emotional experience of playing Suzu and, and what the character goes through, I'm wondering if any of that has shaped your songwriting at all. Ooh, that is very interesting. Um, I think my style of, of writing is, is very different than the bell music? I I'm not sure. I think bell is is it's definitely pop, but it's also it's it's a musical. So it's kind of has like musical theater kind of elements just in the mm -hmm. like insane arcs of the song. And I think my songwriting uh kind of has similar intense arcs to them. I don't know. Um kind of cinematic I don't know. Something like that. Um Oh, that's neat. But I'm not sure if if Bell really uh, affected it that much. Um, okay, I kind of wish no, that's fine. That it I was did. just curious. <laughs> 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 just really quickly, coming off of that, um, how like what genre would you classify the music that you write? That's a good question. I'm not really sure. I always like want to be like it's like indie rock, like cinematic, mm. whatever. Like I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so there's great. cinematic pop. 
Something like that. Okay. But it's also not very poppy. So I don't really know. I guess we'll find out if I ever figure out how to release stuff. <laughs> right. Or yeah. if you have a show ever in Philly, I will I will be there. Oh, so really? I can, yeah, I'm yeah. Trying right to book up, one. it sounds right up my alley. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was trying to book one recently, so I might be there. <laughs> so okay. <what? laughs> then, then so will I. Okay, yeah. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I do also want to ask you about your original music as well. Um, so you have a song called Mad Men that yes, is I inspired do. by The Catcher in the Rye by <laughs> J.D. Salinger. Um, are there any like other songs on your upcoming album that are inspired by literary classics or even, I guess, maybe a song that was inspired by your work with Belle? Oh my god, I love this question. Um, yes, um, there are, I believe, maybe two other songs on, on, on this album that, um, have to do with books. I actually, I wrote this song called Carrie, and I wrote that after I had read this book, A Star is Bored, by Byron Lane, and it's like a fictionalized, um, account kind of based on his time being Carrie Fisher's assistant. And Carrie Fisher's, like, my lord and savior. Like, I have, like, shrines yeah. to her. Like, it's weird. And um, I, <laughs> I've always loved her. And so I read this book, and then I was, I was meditating one day, and this very simple song, like, came to, like, came to me, and I just wrote it. And it's very short. So, um, really, I'm like, it all came to me then. It's very short. Um, but, uh, <laughs> that, that's based on, um, based on that book in the fact, in the way that it's like, uh, he's her assistant and he looks up to her. It's kind of feeling a distance between somebody that you want to communicate with and, Boom. um, and it's not working. Um, so it's kind of about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think that's awesome, and honestly, we're putting it out into the universe that not only will her assistant see this song, but also Billy would see this song. <gasps> oh my I'm, god. I feel like it would be, I mean, it's her mom. I think it would be right up her alley. Like, I yeah. would love that. Actually, the, um, the assistant, Byron Lane, um, mm -hmm. saw my post um, about the song in like 2020 or something like that because I, I wrote it quite, quite a bit of bit ago and I I recorded just like a simple YouTube video um singing it and he saw it and he reached out to me and I was like oh, oh my god. god it was oh. great yeah <laughs> oh wow yes yes it's gonna happen it's like your name's <laughs> gonna be in light like you're gonna yes. perform it you're gonna even go on Kelly Clarkson Yes. Oh. Yes. You'll go oh on the God. Kelly Clarkson show, and then you can talk about how she was also part of your journey and stuff. Cause she like you saying because of you for yes. like your audition. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I hope I really that would be great. I would love that. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, That's we're great. speaking it into existence. Yeah. Thank you guys. <laughs> of course. So we're gonna wrap things up. We just have pretty pretty much two more little questions and. uh one of them is what, since we are Shoujo Sunday, we are, all of our segments are named after, you know, toppings and like soft serve and, mm. you know, scoops and stuff like that. We are curious what your favorite flavor of ice cream is. <gasps> My favorite flavor? It changes. Right now, I'm so basic. I think probably vanilla. Vanilla with like rainbow sprinkles. That's yes. very Chica. Yes. Where can you very go wrong? Mean. Yes. Delicious. I love vanilla. <laughs> oh, it's yes. classic. It's it's the base for a reason, you know? Yes. Vanilla yeah. was first. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Also, I guess for our, our last question, I feel like we're going to end up putting this interview out possibly at the end of July, start of August. So are there any projects that you would like to promote or like people to uh, look out for? Ooh, um, if you're in the New York City area, I will be doing a concert um, at 54 Below on September 20th. I actually still need to sign the document that says that, but it'll be signed by yes. the end of July. Um, so come see me at 54 Below. It'll be great fun. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that'll be a great uh, early autumn evening for, yeah. for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> All right. 
goodness, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, this has been so much fun. It's been great getting to know you tonight, Kylie. Oh my god. Thank you guys so much for listening to Shoujo Sunday this week and tuning into our very special episode with Kylie. If you want to hear more from us, do not forget to follow us on your preferred podcast platform. We are on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere you can think of, and please leave us a five-star review. It would help us out a whole lot and bring more Shoujo fans to Shoujo Sunday. If you would like to follow us on social media, we are at Shoujo Sunday across all socials. And if you want to keep up with us individually, I am Gianna Luna, and you can find me at Gianna underscore Luna underscore, and that is Gianna with one N. And what about you, Chica? You can find me at Chica Supreme um, everywhere, but particularly IG and Twitter, and that's Chica with a K and not two Cs. Um, Kylie, where can the people find you? Oh, uh, at Kylie McNeil on Instagram, there are three L's in my last name, uh, because someone else took my name, um, (laughs) but everywhere else, I'm just Kylie McNeil, two L's at the end. (laughs) Awesome. Awesome. Alrighty. Well, guys, we will catch up with you soon with something new. We will see you then. See you then. Bye. Bye. Bye.